hey guys welcome back to my channel so today's video i am going to discuss my labor and delivery um i actually had my daughter on september 7 2021 and so she's a little bit over a month now and um yes so i was scheduled to have my induction on september 6 i went in at about eight o'clock at night to have my um start the induction process for my daughter um we went in at eight o'clock that night and um i never got induced before so i was like really excited and kind of nervous at the same time because i kind of heard little stories about you know inductions and all this other stuff so i was actually excited when i got to the hospital and they gave me my room that was already you know set up for me because my when you get induced you, it's already scheduled so they already have everything more controlled and everything so i already have my room um set up for me the room that i actually was delivering my daughter for my hospital stay was actually the same room that i delivered my son in 11 years prior so i had the exact same room and I delivered both of my children in the exact same room, 11 years apart, which is so crazy and so ironic. And, um, yeah, so I was very, like, happy about that. Like, when I got upstairs and I, you know, they gave me my, showed me where my room was going to be. I went there and I was just like, this is the exact same room I had my son in 11 years ago. So I was very excited about that because what are really the eyes of that happening? So, yes, my kids were born in the same room at the same hospital and um yes yeah, so i went in that night and get started the induction process i vlogged a little bit of the footage um if you have not seen my previous video please you know go check that out um so i did go in to get induced they we started the induction process around nine o'clock they inserted this little um thing that kind of looked like a little mini tampon they inserted that inside my vagina to, um, you know, start thinning out your cervix and everything. Um, my daughter was not trying to come at all. I had not dilated at all um, prior to. So that little tampon thing had to stay inside my vagina for about 12 hours. So I had to sleep with it in overnight. I felt a little bit of crampiness. I'm not sure what the medication is called, but yeah i felt a little bit of crampiness um throughout the night um that night i really didn't get no sleep my daughter was moving the whole night usually she never moved the entire night she'll get up like around 10 11 o'clock like while i was pregnant and i could feel some movements but she moved the whole entire night it's like she knew that it was coming like she it's just like she knew um so I didn't really get no sleep at all. The nurses kept coming in trying to readjust my um, heart rate monitor that was for my daughter and then the contraction monitor. The heart rate monitor, my daughter Aaliyah, that's her name, she actually kept trying to get off the monitor so they kept coming in adjusting her monitor throughout the whole night. So like I said, I didn't get no sleep. So the next morning, like around 9, 10 o'clock, they came in and took out the... Um, little mini tampon thing they gave me about 30 minutes to um basically not be monitored so that i can go to the restroom um do anything that i needed to do before we started um pitocin so um i was actually off the monitor for about 30 45 minutes um once they took the medicine out my vagina because they just pulled it out like a regular tampon um i do remember i was on the phone with my sister um i was on the phone with her and i was like i felt like some cramping and at that moment i felt like little mini contractions when i started feeling these mini contractions i was like oh no you know like i'm not trying to go through that because i felt the pain of it so yeah i felt the pain of c contractions starting so i was just like no before I, um but um my nurse came in and my doctor was in and they was like um i could start if I wanted to get an epidural, I could go ahead and get my epidural. He was going to allow me to get my epidural prior to me starting the Pitocin. And I was like, I don't know. I'll wait a little bit and see how I felt. So when once I went to the restroom and came back and sat on the bed, I felt like 
contractions in my stomach and I was like oh no like I'm not trying to go through that I felt a mini one it wasn't even a full force contraction and I felt it and I was like no I want to get an epidural so with my first pregnancy with my son I had my son all natural but with my daughter I knew that I wanted to try to take you know medicine get an epidural to make it as easy as possible when i had my son i was 19 years old and here i am having my daughter at 31 i was just like eh, i really want to see about other options um so my nurse came in to um come check me put me back on the monitors and everything and i was like um do you think we can get the epidural like i was trying to sneak it out to my, my nurse miss april i was like do you think we could get the epidural so she was like she was going to call the anesthesiologist and let them know that i did want to go ahead and get the epidural because i didn't want to wait too late because they said if i waited too late i was going to end up having my daughter with no medicine so i was like no we can go ahead and get the epidural first and everything like that so about an hour later the anesthesiologist came up and she was um setting everything up my daughter's dad was there so he had he was sitting on the side of my bed but the anesthesiologist asked him to move to like the front area like where the front chair was at so because i don't know if you know but once you get an epidural like the anesthesiologist need their own personal space you can't be in the area around the anesthesiologist while they're getting that done um so yeah so you can't be around the anesthesiologist while they're setting up and everything so he had they asked him to move on this side so that's the reason why also in my footage from my last video you probably didn't know i had an epidural i did have an epidural but the camera was sitting on a table on the side of me and because they had asked him to move it wasn't like i could ask him to record that part of the video so yes that clip was missing from the video and um yeah I did get an epidural when I delivered my daughter, so I did not deliver her like a champ. Like, I did not just pop a baby out and y'all thought I just had her natural, no problems. No, I had medicine. I was drugged up. <laughs> like, I had medicine when I delivered my daughter. So, yeah. Um, so, I got my epidural before I actually started the Pitocin. So once my anesthesiologist was done, my nurse and everything was setting up the Pitocin and everything. I had already had my um, IV. I had already had my IV inside my hand and everything. So all they did is had to add different little clips to everything. And then my epidural was on one through my back and it was a continuous drip. So they basically told me I couldn't. there was no way possible that I could overdose myself. So I was like, okay, so anytime I felt a contraction or any pressure, I kept pushing the button. So when the Pitocin, the Pitocin is meant to start contractions, like you have powerful contractions. So every time I felt something, I pushed the epidural button because I was like, uh, I'm not going through that. <laughs> so um yes so my doctor actually came in a few moments later and he actually tried to check me and everything like that i was already at 10 centimeters dilated i was complete the problem with it was is i i had pushed the button so much that i could not feel anything down there my nurse miss april she was like just push like you have to take a poop or anything <laughs> and i was just like i can't feel anything so i had been overdosed basically i took too much medicine to the point that i could not push i could not feel me pushing so that was not good you cannot go into labor like you cannot deliver a baby if you cannot push you know so they basically told me i had to sit for an hour to basically let some of the medicine wear off and that not to push the button anymore um so i had to sit about an hour so my daughter could have been born around two o'clock but i had to sit so my daughter wasn't actually born until after three o'clock so once my doctor came back in like around three um he asked me to push like see if i could push and then obviously i was able to push like they could tell that i was pushing so that's when they came in and set everything up um my daughter 
was already like sitting there like i really didn't have to do too much pushing like she was literally born within like two minutes like once everything was set up and everything she was born in like two minutes because it happened really quickly because she was already sitting there she hadn't been sitting there um my daughter's dad actually was facetiming my sister shay she was because it could only be me plus one support person there because of covid and um so my daughter's dad had to FaceTime my sister because my sister actually came in town the weekend before I had my daughter and my daughter was not trying to come at all like I said. So he FaceTimed my sister so my sister was actually able to watch me deliver my daughter and um yeah it seemed like she was more excited because I heard her like once I watched the video back and she was like oh my god I could see her head and it was just like oh my god I just pushed the freaking baby out. So I love actually watching that footage because I didn't get to record that moment with my son. I was nowhere near on YouTube. I didn't even, I don't even know. Like that was like 11 years ago, almost 12 years ago. And I haven't only been on YouTube for like what, eight years on and off. So I don't have that memory with my son. And the fact that actually being able to see my daughter be born is just crazy. Like I was so excited that we actually had the footage because at one point, um my daughter's dad thought that the camera was not recording and i was all sad like the whole time i was in the hospital i was just like dang like i wish i would have been able to record that moment but um i didn't look at none of the footage until i actually got home a few days later after i got a little comfortable with my daughter and um i look back on the footage and that's how i seen that the video they record and i was super happy and so thankful because i wanted to have that moment um for me and my daughter so so yes um but overall the deliver labor and delivery with my daughter was like 10 times better than my labor and delivery with my son if i had another child i would rather you know do the epidural than the pitocin situation that little combination because when i tell you it went by smooth as possible um I had no complaints I felt like everything was handled in a controlled manner and I'm one of those people I like to be in control of the situation um, when I had my son when I had my son it was just all over the place um, I had to basically be rushed in everything like that if nothing was controlled so that's why I was had to have my son natural I was not able to get an epidural even though I asked for one so yes <laughs> i'm sorry i'm not sure if you can hear that little noise but my daughter is actually sitting right here as i film this video and she's like keep throwing her bottle out her mouth so she's making noises <laughs> but um yeah so um, when I deliver her, she was 6 pounds, 8 ounces, 19 inches long. Um, what's wrong? Yeah, so, um, she was a tiny baby, but she was, like, average. Um, my experience with having a baby during the pandemic, um, was kind of, like, depressing, to say the least. I did not enjoy it at all. Um most of my daughter's appointments i had to go by myself or i could only have that one support person um so in the beginning like i was able to go to my appointments you know with my support person but towards the end of my pregnancy i was just going to my appointments by myself um it was kind of depressing like delivering my daughter with just me and her dad there not having like my sister or actually my mom there because it, it was completely different from when I delivered my son to now delivering my daughter um my daughter's dad didn't stay the whole time that I was in the hospital um so once he left he actually left the night of me delivering my daughter so I still was in the hospital the rest of that night plus two extra days 
by myself like they had the hospital basically is like shut down like you cannot have like switch out people to come stay with you at the hospital so it was very depressing and very lonely it was like literally just me and my daughter there the whole time we were in the hospital um so mentally like i felt like i was not in a good space um after delivering my daughter i felt like that should have been my happiest moment but it really wasn't i was very depressed i was i was very depressed i was ready to go home because i felt like i could be literally just sitting around my house with both of my kids versus just one with my son just spread it around like at my dad's house and not being able to have visitors i felt like my time at the hospital would have been a whole lot better if I would have been able to have visitors or at least be able to have my son there but I wasn't allowed to have an extra person so I was just say like um I feel like the pandemic really like it really takes a toll on the pregnant like I feel like it take a toll on both parties like the woman that's carrying and also their spouse as well especially if like you're married or in a relationship and your spouse wants to go to your doctor's appointments and stuff and most of the time they can't even go to your appointments so i do feel like it is very like sad like it can like i couldn't even imagine like going through delivering my daughter by myself but um i know when the pandemic first started like oh it's almost been like two years now um, people really were having to deliver women were really having to deliver their children by themselves like doesn't matter if you were married or not like you were delivering your children by yourself so I feel like this pandemic really takes a toll on both parties especially the woman itself because it's just like women go through so many stages during their pregnancy and postpartum and I feel like that just makes it so much more you know complicated um to say the least and i don't know i just i really did not really enjoy that part of it i just felt like you know covid really took a toll on the experience for me personally because um i would rather have like you know visitors and support people to be there for me you know so yeah and it's just it was just a lot like it was a lot i don't know maybe later on i will you know make another video to more so elaborate on a lot of things because a lot of things are still going on and unfolding but um yeah so i don't know you guys